Social Stratification Social stratification is defined as the structured patterns of inequalities that exist among different groups in the society in terms of their differential access to materialistic or symbolic rewards. The structure of social stratification is similar to the geological structure of layered rocks on the surface of the earth. There are strata in society that are arranged in hierarchical orders which consist of the most advantaged social group at the top and the least advantaged group at the bottom. This hierarchical order of social stratification helps us to understand the inequitable distribution of power in society. Stratification is a very important aspect of study in sociology since every individual is influenced by it. In earlier times, there were four primary forms of stratification in society. They are slavery, caste, estate and class. Slavery constituted an extreme form of discrimination. Here, poor people were brought and sold by the rich. This system has officially been abolished, though it exists in a different form, namely child labor. The estate form of classification in the feudal society, Europe, is another instance of social stratification. It divided the people into hierarchical classes of nobility, clergy and commoners. The main forms of stratification that exist in the contemporary society are caste and class that will be discussed here. Caste In the caste system of stratification, an individual's position in society is not chosen by him but accredited to him by birth. This system is more or less rigid since the person's status attributed to him is not a result of his or her personal efforts and accomplishments. The caste system of stratification is an age-old established system found in the Indian society. The caste system was based on the notion of purity or pollution with respect to different hierarchical positions of the castes. There were basically four traditional Varnas, Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Shudras. The Brahmins were situated at the highest position of the caste hierarchy and thus were considered to be the purest of all. The Panchamas, who were referred to as the outcasts, were the most inferior ones. Apart from the Varnas, there were several occupation-based castes that were known as Jatis. The caste system has gone through countless modifications over the years. In the earlier times, endogamy or marriage within one's own caste and the principle of purity and pollution were followed strictly, but now these restrictions are not given much importance. The Indian sociologist A. R. Desai observes that modern industries and urbanization brought about inevitable changes in the practice of the caste system. The cities developed new modes of transportation which were available for everyone to use. There were innumerable budget hotels that catered to everyone and were open for all. However, it is important to note that these changes did not dissolve the discrimination between castes entirely. The caste system continues to foster itself through various other means like caste politics and private interactions between people. Class Marx 
Weber and the functional theorists have all focused on the study of class as an important system of social stratification. Marx propounded the theory that social classes are recognized by their relation to the means of production in the capitalist society. Weber was more concerned about inequalities produced by classes which were not only based on economic relations but also rested on social status and power. The functionalist theory proposes the necessity of social stratification in societies to motivate the individuals to fight for their social positions. According to this theory, a classless society can never exist. It further believes that social stratification is like a natural method of correction. It gives assurance that the most deserving persons will automatically get the topmost position. Unlike the caste system, the class system rests on self-attained positions. A modern democratic society allows a person to shift his or her class position and reach the highest level of the class system. There have been instances of social mobility and improvement in one's class position. However, most people belonging to the lower classes find it difficult to shift their class position due to various social and economical constraints. In Indian villages and tribal areas, mostly people are economically handicapped. This deprives them of basic amenities required for a healthy living. Status and Role The concepts of status and role can be considered as two sides of the same coin. Status is referred to as the position that an individual occupies in the society or social group. An individual holds various positions in society. Each position carries designated rights and duties. For instance, a father occupies a certain position in a society and is expected to follow the norms and responsibilities that are assigned to that position. A role can be referred to as the behavior that is expected from the individual occupying a certain position. A status can be considered as an institutionalized role where the role has assumed standardized and regularized characteristics. In a modern society, an individual occupies different kinds of status throughout his or her lifetime. For example, a woman occupying the status of a daughter, wife, an entrepreneur, a mother, and grandmother at the same time. The kinds of status an individual holds decreases with the size and complexity of the society that he is a part of. The different status occupied by an individual in a modern society is known as status set and the status required sequentially throughout the course of his or her life is known as status sequence. For example, a man becomes a husband to someone and then becomes a father and eventually a grandfather. Traditional societies are composed of statuses assigned to an individual by birth. For example, caste, age, race, and kinship. Modern societies are characterized by statuses that an individual accomplishes by his or her own hard work. For example, 
educational qualification. These achieved statuses are accompanied by prestige. Prestige is referred to the value accorded to a social position without considering its economic aspect. An engineer often enjoys higher prestige than a tuition teacher even if the tuition teacher manages to earn more than the engineer from the tuitions. Roles are performed according to social expectations. When an individual faces contrast and discord among multiple roles played by him or her corresponding to one or more statuses held by them in the society, it gives rise to role conflict. For example, imagine a situation where a lady police officer discovers that her son is a drug dealer. As a mother, she would want to protect her son and as a police officer, she would be expected to punish her son. In this case, the woman faces role conflict. Sometimes, certain roles are assigned for specific members of the society, which may result in role stereotyping. Gendered roles can be an example of role stereotyping, in which men are considered to work and earn money, whereas women are assigned the roles of looking after the house. These roles are sometimes thought to be fixed and any change in these roles is not approved by the larger society. These social roles are taken on through the process of socialization. The process of socialization results in an individual to internalize social norms and values of the society and thus act in sanctioned ways in the society that is to be lived in. As individuals internalize the existing social values and norms in the society, the stereotyping of certain social roles are also something they are socialized into. Status and roles can be changed through individual efforts. Acting within the social constraints, people often try to bring about changes in the society by fighting against stereotyping and thereby bring about positive changes for the sufferers. Society and Social Control Social control is a social process which maintains order in society and keeps a check on individual behavior. There are several theories in sociology regarding the meaning and functions of social control. The functionalist perspective Views social control has the following aspects to it. 1. Use of force on individuals or members of social groups to administer their behavior. 2. To impose values in society to ensure order. Social control is held to be necessary for controlling deviant behavior and Reducing conflict among individuals and groups. The conflict perspective views social control as an imposition of the interests of the dominant classes on the other classes of the society. Social control can be understood in two ways. Either as a way to regulate the behavioral patterns of the individuals in a society in a sanctioned way or as a way to impose patterns and values that are required for maintaining the equilibrium of the society. There are two types of social control, formal and informal. Formal social control takes place when structured and codified forms of mechanisms are used, like the judiciary and the government. Informal social control, on the other hand, is entirely personal and unauthorized. It is the control exercised by agencies like family, peer groups, religious groups on an individual 
in order to ensure compliance towards the socially accepted norm of behavior. An example can be the negative or positive reactions of people or even their body language. It is important to understand that informal form of social control is not always morally and ethically correct, neither does it guarantee reference and complete submission. Social sanction is another important concept with relation to social control. It is a form of reward or punishment to maintain social norms. A social reward leads to positive social control, whereas a punishment leads to negative social control, which is used to prevent deviant behavior. Deviant behavior refers to the actions of individuals or groups that do not adhere to the social norms prevalent in the society. The idea of deviance is relative in a way. Not only does it vary from culture to culture, it can also vary within the same society depending on the period that it is a part of. For example, a woman wanting to work after marriage can be considered deviant at one period of time while the same aspiration may be praised at another period of time in the same society. The terms and concepts that have been explained in this chapter will help you all to gather a better sociological understanding and develop a sense of sociological terminologies in the process.